Welcome back from the break. Now we're ready to dive into the hybrid hydraulic propulsion systems and the pneumatic hybrid engine systems. And then look at some case studies where these features have been implemented and tested. Jumping in to hybrid hydraulic propulsion systems. There we have the energy storage done by a hydraulic accumulator. We have hydraulic motor pump. We have another hydraulic pump. The regenerative goes into the hydraulic accumulator. Before going into the details of the hydraulic hybrid, we will look at a video done by PSA, Peugeot Citroën, where they are explaining the functionality. So here you see a drivetrain with the components of the vehicle, where we have the engine, we have a gearbox, and we have two energy storages, one mid that's mainly for the propulsion and regenerative braking and then we have uh, the hydraulic unit with the hydraulic pump and the oil filters and all the other components needed to have it running we have different operating modes we have pure gasoline which is optimized for cruising we have the combined where we do boosting and we have air power, zero emission vehicle, when we're running it with the hybrid mode. In highway driving, we're using the combustion engine to drive the vehicle forward. Um, and we're not utilizing any other, the, the other component. And in the combined mode, in cities and in highways, Either when we want to do boosting or recharge. And then when we're running in cities on zero emission vehicle mode, we utilize the energy stored in the accumulator. As you could see, the volume was decreased. And when we do regenerative braking, we store the energy back into the system again. So the low pressure part is the low pressure part is an oil reservoir that is used to store the oil that we're taking out of the hydraulic accumulator when we are doing discharging and then we're taking oil from the reservoir and put it back into the energy storage when we do regenerative braking or do recharging so the causality looks very much like you have seen in many other cases where we have the vehicle and the information is propagated back up to the engine or to the hydraulic accumulator where we have this linkage system that tells how the power split should be done. So coming to the hydraulic accumulator, the modeling is done with the energy balance and the mass balance. And the energy balance is a straightforward first uh, law of thermodynamic where we have uh, the energy stored which is uh, encapsulated by the temperature. temperature is in the book denoted by theta. Then we have the mechanical work here, which is P dV work. And then we have heat transfer that goes from the gas component here that we're compressing and then it is dissipated through the walls. The theta wall here is temperature of the wall of the storage chamber. Then we have the mass balance. So this is where we are looking at the hydraulic fluid and the volume. So we have the hydraulic fluid flow and we have the volume of uh, the container. And finally to tell how the volume is connected to the temperature and to the pressure we use the ideal gas law. The power generation from the hydraulic accumulator is the same thing as the pressure in the hydraulic accumulator times the volume flow out here. So this is uh, uh, P 
times v dot. So it's PDV essentially. To get the simple model that can be used to analyze and simulate the system, uh, we are assuming steady state conditions for the temperature. So we take away the temperature and then we get the following connection between the pressure and the flows that we have placed into the system. So if we combine this with the power output, we get the power output that gets connected to the volume flows. By adding an integrator for the hydraulic oil flow gives our state that is the gas volume in the hydraulic accumulator. More details about modeling the hydraulic system efficiency is given in the book. One detail if you select to do this assignment is if you look into this simplification and if you look into this denominator, you see that there's a minus sign and if you get the wrong coefficients for the different model components like the ideal gas constant, the temperature, the wall heat transfer coefficient, the wall area, then you might get division by zero and simulation might crash. So if the simulation crashes, you know where to look for the problems. In the hydraulic hybrid systems we have pumps and motors and this is a sketch of how two different pumps can look like so this is a system that's rotating so it's rotating around the shaft here and this swash plate has an angle that is following the rotation and makes the pistons here pump out and pump in so that you can control the fluid flow with opening and closing of the valves to these pistons and you can also control the flow rate by the angle of the swash plate. Another way of doing the same thing is to have these shafts at an angle of each other to generate this uh, oscillatory movement. There are separate courses on hydraulic systems and we will not go more in details in this. We're mostly interested in the power transfer and the losses to monitor the energy transfer that's done. When we look at it from a QSS perspective and we are using efficiency modeling, we have the power output. And when we're taking power out from the system, we get the hydraulic motor in the denominator so that we request more power on the input shaft than we get on the output shaft. And like the electric machine, we can mirror the efficiencies from hydraulic motor part to regenerative braking mode for the other case. It's also possible to do Willans line modeling where we describe the losses that occur in the pump. And in the book, there's also a physical modeling approach described by using the Wilson's approach that you can turn to if you're interested. The next concept that we will look at is pneumatic hybrid engine systems. In this case, we're storing energy by compressing gas inside a pressure tank. It's a little bit like the hydraulic system, but there is no hydraulic pump. Instead, the engine is used as the pump. So this is a sketch of the pneumatic hybrid engine system that has been developed and tested at Swiss Federal Institute of Technology under the supervision of Lina Guzzella and co-workers. So here are a gasoline direct injected engine. So the fuel is injected directly into the cylinders so that fuel won't enter into the pressure tank that is connected to the cylinder. So you have the intake valve and you have the exhaust valve and then you have another valve that is connected to a pipe leading to a reservoir where you can store the gas. To understand the operation we will look at the cylinder pressure that's inside here and we will look at it using uh, the PV diagram, so pressure volume diagram. In the pressure volume diagram we have volume here on the x-axis, so this is when the piston is up at the top dead center and then it expands out so it's at bottom dead center so this is where the volume is the maximum. And then on the y-axis here we have the pressure in the cylinder. And it works like this, we go and we suck in air, so the piston goes away from the top dead center and it sucks in air and then the valve is closed and you go up here and you compress and then here you have combustion and we come down to the exhaust side where we open the valve and the, we have something that's called blowdown and then we go and the piston presses out, the gases out into the exhaust. If we're running at high loads, we are going this where we get a bigger area, higher area. 
if we are at low load, we follow the solid lines here. When this system can operate in two different modes, it's a supercharge mode where we are uh, running the engine, we are doing the compression, and before the compression has gone all the way up, we take air from the tank and we jump start the system by letting more air into the cylinders so that we get more energy available to the system. And then we, it continues and goes around. So this is supercharge mode. Then we have undercharge mode or regenerative mode where you are operating down here so that you actually use the piston to press gases into the storage chamber. And then it's continued and then we have the combustion and expansion again. And we can also do complete regenerative braking where we are going in the loop in this way. And so every cycle we're pressing gases with the piston into the tank. And you can see that we're consuming because we are going counterclockwise in the PV diagram. That is consuming work. If we would go back here we're going clockwise and this is producing work. So this system has been developed and there is a prototype engine in the lab in Zurich. Now we come to some case studies where these concepts have been implemented and tested. This is case study number three in the book where they developed a complete internal combustion engine and flywheel powertrain that did this pulse and glide operation. They had the engine with a clutch and the flywheel and then they had this CVT to decouple the rotation of the flywheel and the vehicle so that you could use the engine to pump up the energy of the flywheel and use the flywheel for driving so that you could get access to the high efficiency high load points of the engine and run the vehicle off the energy that we're storing in the flywheel during the high points and the engine then goes up and down in speed while the flywheel together with the CVT or I should say the the CVT gives the speed control of the vehicle. And the operation is like this. Initially we have the engine speed off here and we're taking the energy from the flywheel to drive the vehicle forward. And while we're going down here we get to a low point and at this point we start the engine. You can see the engine start up here. They are synchronized, the clutch is put together and then the engine is used to push up the angular velocity and thus the energy in the flywheel. Then the engine speed goes out. During these transient conditions the CVT is used to give a continuous nice flow of the vehicle velocity. To get the best fuel economy they did parameter optimization of this turn on and turn off velocity for the flywheel as a function of vehicle velocity. And they did parameter optimization for the whole operating region of the vehicle and then stored that offline optimization to use it during driving so that they could use the control action directly from the optimization without needing to do the optimization online. So this vehicle has been out running on the roads in Zurich and you can read more about this system in case study number three. Coming to another case study, case study number eight, we have this hybrid pneumatic engine where it was also done with combined uh, optimization using offline for doing the engine thermodynamic cycle, optimizing it and then having different modes like the regenerative mode, like the boosting mode and then to develop a complete driving schedule they use dynamic programming to do the mode selection. With this we have finished lecture number seven so hope that you have seen some new things that you didn't think of concerning possibilities of developing hybrid vehicles where you have different types of energy storages. And with that I thank you for today and see you in the Q&A session. Bye!